Hello and welcome back to our Lord of the Rings LCG solo progression series. And today's quest is Into Fangorn, which is the third and final scenario in the Voice of Isengard Deluxe expansion. Uh, so a quick reminder, in this series we're playing through each quest in chronological order of the game's initial release. And we'll only be using player cards that were available at the time of this quest release. I'm calling this deck Quite Charming Forest because just like Gimli, who happened to wander into Fangorn and wanted to immediately get out, uh, we were going to do the same thing in this quest. We uh, don't like Fangorn. It's intimidating, and the trees don't like us in this scenario. So uh, we're using familiar heroes, but there are a couple of cards worth mentioning. Uh, one is Emery. Uh, she came out in the Blood of Gondor. I've not used her, but she's great in Mono Spirit because you just discard as an action three cards from your deck to put her in play. And if you're in Mono Spirit, you're not going to have any tactics or lore or leadership uh, cards in that sphere. And so she is put into play for free. So she's great. Uh, and then Saruman is not a card I use a whole lot, but he's great for this quest. And so uh, I'm thinking maybe moving forward, I'm going to try to figure out ways to put him into play more because he is a underrated card, especially in solo. Only cost three nice stats uh, for the cost of Doom three. And he removes a card a non-unique enemy or location in the staging area for the round, just kind of considered to be out of play. So super, super powerful. And let's get to the quest and see how we do. This is a quick one. I'll usually win this in three to four, five rounds. Okay, good opening hand. Uh, you, you'll notice I only have one copy of Light of Valinor. We don't really need Light of Valinor for this quest. Uh, I usually like to mulligan for Saruman since we have one. That we'll just keep it. And uh, man, two Pelar Gear shipwrights, so we're going to have no problem with willpower. Should be a, a three round win, I would guess. It says uh, Into the woods, you've captured the orc Captain Mugosh in the mountains above Isengard. But as you make your way down Methedras, your captive escapes and flees east into Fangorn. For setup, we add Edge of Fangorn to the staging area and attach Mugosh to that location. Here's Edge of Fangorn, immune to player card effects. There's a travel effect that'll cause us to put an enemy into the staging area. Here's Mugash. He attaches to Edge of Fangorn. He's just chilling out, leaning against a tree. And once he's unguarded, we can just exhaust a hero to claim him and attach it to that hero. So we shuffle the encounter deck and then reveal X encounter cards, where X equals the number of players in the game minus one. So one minus one is zero. So kind of cool. Nine progress needed to advance, you pursue Mugash into the ancient forest to find that the trees themselves seem to be attacking him. Without thinking, you hack at the tree branches to rescue your captive. That is when you first sense your own peril. So, just like Gimli, we've messed up. Time counters, there's four. Uh, if and when the final time counter is removed, and remember one is removed at the end of every refresh phase, after the last time counter is removed from the stage, shuffle Mugash into the encounter deck and advance to stage three, which is a real bummer. Uh, hopefully we won't see stage three. Uh, I think that would result probably in a loss. I don't know. I've never actually, with this deck, I don't remember ever going to stage three. Players can't advance until to stage two unless Mugash is attached to a hero. Okay, so resource phase. And... I think the best thing to do is just go ahead and put out Pelar Gear Shipwright. And Pelar Gear Shipwright gets plus one willpower for each hero you control with a printed spirit resource icon. Because there is a card called Low Provisions, and I want to talk about it real quick. Well, maybe it might come out during the course of play. But let's quest with everybody, including, uh, including Glorfindel. And when he exhausts a quest, we raise our threat by one. And we will reveal... Turned around, when revealed, either remove one time counter from a card in play or return the active location to the staging area. Uh, so I have to do the first option. I'll remove a time counter because there is no active location. And we made 10 progress, which is enough to clear this, but we do not yet control uh, Mugash. So during the travel phase, we'll travel to Edge of Fangorn. To do that, there's a travel effect. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Hewarn enemy and add it to the staging area to travel here. Two Hewarn enemies if there are three or more players in the game. Let's travel here and pick a Hewarn enemy to add to the staging area. 
There are 10 total, and there's three varieties of them. The, first of all, there's the angry Huorn, a 38 engagement. Uh, it has the keyword hinder. All of these have the keyword hinder, which I'll talk about in a minute. And they all have unique forced effects. But 38 engagement, this one has one engagement. And then this one, the deadly Huorn, has 34 engagement. So these uh, these trees, these Huorns, are interesting. When they're in staging, they just contribute their threat. They don't do anything except just just sort of they're there and they contribute their threat. But the second that an enemy, one of these shoehorn enemies engages us, let me go ahead and just pull all three of these into the engaged area. So when they're engaged with us, at the beginning of every combat round or phase, uh, hinder uh, causes us to remove a point of progress for each uh, Huorn or each hinder enemy that we have engage with us, not at stage in area, but engaged. So if I have three like this, uh, at the beginning of combat, I'd remove three progress. If there wasn't progress on the current quest, then you would remove progress from the active location. If there's no progress anywhere, it just misfires. And then additionally, all of these enemies have unique forced effects, uh, that they have to be engaged with us for the forced effects to apply. This one, Angry Huorn, at the beginning of each resource phase, Angry Huorn attacks the engaged player. So notice it has to be engaged with us for that to happen. And then Deadly Huorn, at the beginning of each resource phase, the engaged player must deal three damage to a character he controls. Frodo's great for these forced effects. And then Dark Hearted Huorn, the least problematic forced effect, at the beginning of each resource phase, the engaged player must raise his threat by two. So the one we're going to choose uh, to put in staging, if we put Dark Hearted Huorn into play, he's going to come right back down during the encounter phase. Let's go ahead and put Deadly Huorn into the staging area and shuffle these back in. So we just shuffle the deck. And um, that was the end of quest phase. You know, we made the necessary progress. Actually, no, it was travel. We traveled here. And that was a travel effect. Deadly Huorn is now in staging. During the encounter phase, we will not optionally engage Deadly Huorn. So the hinder doesn't matter. If it was engaged with us, we would remove a progress because we have a single enemy with hinder. And then at the beginning of the resource phase, you'd have that forced effect. But anyway, we're going to refresh. And at the end of the refresh phase, we remove a time counter. And we'll move on to the next round. Okay, uh, I think probably let's just go ahead and put in Pillar Gear ship, Shipwright. So he is getting plus one willpower for each hero you control with a printed uh, spirit resource icon. Okay, we're going to quest with Glorfindel as well. Whenever he quests, exhaust a quest, we raise our threat by one. And it will make plenty of progress here. We reveal... Tangled Woods. While Tangled Woods is in the staging area, each forest location in play gains a travel effect, which is just exhaust a hero to travel here. This ability does not stack with other copies of Tangled Woods. Okay, so we made nine progress, meaning seven on the current quest. So we easily cleared that. That goes to the victory display. So Mugash is now unguarded. And that is the quest resolution step. And there's an action window after quest resolution. During that action window, let's exhaust Frodo to uh, attach Mugash to Frodo. Action, exhaust a hero to claim this objective. When it is free of encounters, attach Mugash to that hero. And we weren't able to advance because the players can't advance unless Mugash is attached to a hero. Now, why I like Frodo to have Mugash is because of this force effect. After attached hero takes damage, return Mugash to the top of the encounter deck. Uh, Frodo has the ability to cancel damage, and so uh, it's, he's the best uh, hero to take Mugash. And that allows us, uh, there's some effects that want to put damage on us, on our different characters, like a, sort of like archery. And so we can put up to four on Glorfindel without losing Mugash. But we have advanced to escape from Fangorn. You've rescued Mugash from the trees, but you sense the force itself seethes with, in, with anger toward you. The thankless orc struggles against you, and tree branches grasp at you. It's going to be a hard fight to get out of Fangorn with your captive. When revealed, each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for a Huorn enemy and adds it to the staging area. So the one I'm going to grab this time 
is the one engagement, Dark Hearted Huorn. Then we shuffle the deck. So uh, we put it into the staging area. Four, four time counters. And it says, after the last time counter is removed from the stage, shuffle Mugash into the encounter deck and advance to stage three, which stage three is kind of a dead end. You have to loop back around because this is where you win the game is stage two. The players cannot defeat the stage unless Mugash is attached to a hero. If the players defeat the stage, they win the game. So during travel, we don't want to travel here uh, because there's four progress on it and I don't have anybody that I can exhaust anyway. So that just stays in staging. Uh, during the encounter phase, during engagement checks, we will have a dark hearted Huron engage us. And remember, these uh, Huron enemies do not get shadow cards. They do not attack. They just contribute their hinder ability and their forced effect. So at the beginning of combat, we remove a point of progress from the current quest. There isn't any progress to be removed. And so dark hearted Huron, Huron uh, the, the hinder doesn't do anything. We refresh, and at the end of the refresh phase, we remove a time counter, and we'll move on to what I think is the next round. At the beginning of the refresh phase, we have this forced effect. At the beginning of each resource phase, I think I might have said refresh. At the beginning of each resource phase, the engaged player must raise his threat by two. So we are at two. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think how I have... 27, whatever. I don't know how I got to 27 threat, but I'm sure I did. Okay, we're in planning here, and uh, let's have fun. Let's put Saruman into play. And so he's not a card all uh, you get to use a whole lot. He has Doom 3, so our threat goes up by 3. And it says uh, response. And just like, just like Gandalf, at the end of the round, we'll discard Saruman from play. And this is kind of cool and thematic, you know, uh, uh, Saruman definitely wandered the woods of uh, Fangorn, so it's cool that he's here. Response, after Saruman enters play, choose a non-unique enemy or location in the staging area. Uh, while Saruman is in play, the chosen enemy or location is considered to be out of play. Let's go ahead and, uh, either one is contributing to threat. Let's go ahead and consider Tangle Woods to be out of play. That would remove this travel effect being sort of universal for all locations and uh, just in case somehow we don't win this round but I think we're about to so uh, so he's cool because he's questing for three but he also takes away uh, the threat of enemies in staging so he's great for this quest now let's go all out we're going to quest with everybody I think we will yeah let's do it and then uh, there is a treachery that tells us that any engaged Q-Warns attack us, but Frodo's response makes that not a big deal, and it can't be canceled with Test of Will anyway. So let's quest, and we reveal Tangled Woods, and we made 14 progress, but before finishing up the quest, let's uh, pitch Sylvan Refugee to boost Eowyn by one, and so we made 15 progress. And we won the quest. If the players defeat the stage, they win the game. We, we did, because Mugash was attached to uh, one of our heroes. So you can see how great Saruman is. And his health is really important because there's a very crucial rule here, I think, that we might want to just talk about real quickly about archery and, and cards like low on provisions. Let's look at low on provisions. If this had come out, when revealed, each player must assign X damage among characters he controls, where X is the number of characters that player controls. I control one, two, three, four, five, six. It's great to have Test of Will to cancel this, but uh, if I don't have Test of Will and I have to put out six, sometimes you know our allies might be these Westfold Horse Breeders or uh, even Escort from Eteros, so not a lot of health. We, we happen to have some good health in play f f per ally, so we're fine. But right now I'd have to distribute one, two, three, four, five, six damage. Well, let's just assume that all of these had one health. Well, when you do this, it's just like archery. You don't do it one point of damage at a time. You, uh, it's like committing to the quest. Everybody commits simultaneously. You, you, you decide how the damage is going to be distributed, and then you're applying it all at once. And that really matters for if you had multiple Sylvan refugees in play. But I'd have to do uh, six points of damage. 
Um, so let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, I have plenty of health, but if I didn't, uh, Frodo, it's very important to know this. You can't go, well, I'll put all six on Frodo, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then cancel it. He can only take this kind of damage equal to his health. So if I have two health, I can take two. And then, yes, I can, as part of placing that damage on him, I can respond and cancel it. But uh, he just can't take all archery damage or all damage like this. That spread out damage has to be placed simultaneously on all your characters in play. So that's very important, a very important ruling to keep in mind. But now, if you ever have an attack, a single enemy attack, or a single, like, put 10 damage on an ally or a character, yes, overage can go on top of Frodo, but not in this case. Uh, let's look at the deck and see what maybe we missed. We talked about the enemies, so I don't think there's anything to say there. Locations, nothing really to say. Uh, this can be canceled. This one can't be, and it just tells us to that each you weren't engaged with a player attacks. Uh, sometimes, sometimes maybe this could be helpful. But anyway, I don't know that I really need three tests of wills, but you have three tests of wills mainly just hoping that you'll have one in your hand and you could deal with a possible low on provisions because sometimes you have the one health allies out. And as much as possible, I've tried to put out two health allies like the Ritter Mark's Finest, but a lot of the stronger willpower have the lower health. Uh, we didn't see Emery, but if we had had her in our hand, where is she at? She sort of looks like Envoy of Pelar gear. There she is. Uh, to put her in play, you just, as an action, just discard three cards. One, two, three. There's no uh, tactics, uh, sphere, uh, ta tactics, um, what am I trying to say? Tactics, lore, or leadership. So she gets put into play for free. Now, if we had had to go to stage three, it looks like this. Uh, there's ti three time counters and all this crazy stuff. But if when we do something here, whatever it is, I don't even care, but just you can pause the screen and look. I've just this deck isn't ever going to go to the angry forest. Well, that's it. That's the quest, and I hope you enjoyed it. We will continue on uh, with nightmare mode stuff. We're going to be doing the nightmare version of uh, the Hills of Emin Muil next. So, looking forward to that, and I hope you'll join me again. Uh, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.